I love ferrofluid, except for the price of it. So in this video I'll show you how to easily make something similar yourself. It's even quite cheap, how about a kilogram of it for the price of a couple of Big Mac meals. This time I'll handle powerful magnets and stuff so messy you won't believe the cleanup afterwards. Oh, and if you suffer from trypophobia, you may find some clips disturbing. Other than this, it's fairly safe. Do try this at home. In my latest video, I ended up with a lot of unused cooking oil. I don't feel like drinking all of this, but I've been told that by just mixing cooking oil and a special printer toner, you can make a simple ferro fluid. The toner needs to be of the MICR type. This is an old technology used for printing magnetic characters, which can be read by a magnetic read head. The toner contains iron oxide and is clearly attracted by a magnet. A promising start. However, I tried mixing it with different oils, even mineral oil, but never had a good result. It was either a thick paste or a thick paste with excessive oil floating on top of it. I'm not saying it is impossible, so feel free to do your own experiments. I just couldn't get it to spike. So I ditched the toner, which is filled with unnecessary stuff, and went directly for the magic ingredient in it, iron oxide. I went to the local hardware store and bought these free pigments for paints. These are all nothing but types of iron oxides. The yellow one is useless for this purpose, way too weak interaction with the magnet. When opening the red type, it instantly made me think of a Martian landscape. Not a coincidence since the planet Mars is red due to iron oxides. This does visibly react to a magnet, but it's much weaker than the printer toner. Let's move on to the black one. As for color, the brownish black iron oxide is the most boring of the three. Yet, its response to a magnet is phenomenal. Oh, I mean, oh yes, this is the stuff I need. This is magnetite, the most magnetic of all minerals you can find in nature. I tried mixing this with the cooking oils and did see some small spikes, but nothing impressive and still problems with separation of the oil and magnetite. I felt like I was making fail fluid. One of the problems is that I'm only adding two or three parts needed for good spikes. The magnetite is the active magnetic part and the oil is the carrier fluid. But I need a surfactant to cover the magnetite particles or they will clump together and drop to the bottom of the fluid. After some more experiments I discovered a surprising solution for this. I immediately made a larger batch of this to see if I could scale it up. Using the tabletop as a shield between the petridges and the magnet I started testing it. I call this fairy paste since it is more viscous than the commercial ferro fluid. And it is fairy magnetic, not ferro magnetic, but more about that later. Right now, you are probably more interested in making it yourself. Here's how I did it. I took 10 grams of the black iron oxide pigment. Accuracy is not critical, you don't need a milligram scale for it. Then I took 10 grams of an oil that works both as a carrier fluid and as a surfactant. This is not a cooking oil. It is magnetic motor oil. It is not magnetic, even though they seem to imply it. 
There's a lot of marketing mumbo-jumbo on it, but it's designed to create a thin film on the metal inside an engine. It seems to work well for covering magnetite as well, keeping it from sticking together in the ferry paste. All I had to do was mix the iron oxide and motor oil. I used a chopstick as a stirring rod. There you go, it really is that easy. This is great, and since it is easy and cheap to make, it's time to go from great to huge. I've got a larger magnet, which needs some exercise. Let's go from 20 grams to 1000 grams of fairy paste. This is beyond what I'll mix with the chopsticks, so I bought the cheapest electric hand mixer I could find as a sacrificial tool. I predict this will be messy. It may even be too cheap since it will overheat if used for more than 5 minutes. Maybe it'll burst into flames over the motor oil. Especially if I use the turbo button. Brilliant. Um, this seems more than fast enough, but I've got to try that turbo button. Tighten your sphincters. I'm going for turbo mode. Oh, it doesn't work. After lowering the speed, I realized all the button does is to go to speed setting 5. After around 5 minutes of mixing, it is time for a magnet test. Will it work? Oh yes, there's definitely a mutual attraction. A lot that is. And I see spikes. Now, my monster magnet is 13 times larger than this one and of higher grade, so I will have to be more careful. I will use the tabletop as a barrier again. Enjoy the show! There's one thing I would like to know. Did you enjoy it or did it freak you out? Let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, I'll try to explain the difference between ferry and ferromagnetism. 
In my video Exotic Elements vs Magnet Part 4, I showed how we in our daily lives only divide materials into magnetic or non-magnetic. This is too simplified since all materials, even the non-magnetic, react to a magnet. Most materials just react so weakly that we can't feel it or see it unless we try to detect it in a sensitive setup. These three types of magnetisms describe the macroscopic reactions we can see. But if we zoom in on an atomic level, magnetism is caused by the movement of unpaired electrons in the materials, especially how they align in groups called domains inside the material. In fact, they can align in so many ways that we have found a lot of different types of magnetisms. To our eyes, a ferromagnetic material reacts exactly like a ferromagnetic one, but the domains inside align differently, like shown here. In ferromagnetism, all domains align in the same direction. In ferrimagnetism, however, like in magnetite, some weaker domains align opposite of the stronger ones. This happens since magnetite contains two different irons of iron. Alright, hope you liked this video enough to click the thumbs up button. And maybe even subscribe if you are new here. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.